Plants transport water and dissolved minerals through a specialized complex tissue called xylem. Xylem cells form continuous columns from the roots through the stems and leaves. In mature xylem, the conducting cells are dead. Xylem also makes up the woody supporting tissue of trees, and one reason that trees can attain great heights is the vast amount of xylem they produce. Roots, stems, and leaves all contain xylem and play specific roles in the movement of water through the plant. Water and mineral transport begin with uptake from the soil. Water and dissolved minerals are taken up by the root hairs from the surrounding soil. Water moves through the root cortex to the vascular tissue. It passes into the xylem and moves upward through the root and into the stem. Mineral ions are pumped into the xylem by active transport. Water and dissolved minerals continue upward through the stem and into the leaves. Finally, the water reaches the veins in the leaf. The water molecules pass out of the vascular tissue and into the mesophyll. They evaporate from the mesophyll cell surfaces into the moist interior of the leaf. When the stomata are open, the water molecules pass out of the leaf. This loss of water from the leaves through the stomata is called transpiration. A pair of guard cells controls the opening and closing of the stomata, which in turn controls the rate of transpiration. Factors that influence the rate of transpiration include the availability of water in the soil, relative humidity, amount of sunlight, and temperature. When there is abundant sunlight, low humidity, and adequate soil moisture, most of the stomata are open and the transpiration rate is high. On cloudy days with low soil moisture, most of the stomata are closed and the transpiration rate is low. At night, transpiration all but ceases. Not all of the water transported through the xylem is lost to transpiration. Some is used in the chemical reactions of photosynthesis, and some is used in the transport of sugars. Plants transport sugars in a specialized tissue called phloem. Unlike the conducting cells in xylem, phloem cells are alive. Roots, stems, and leaves all contain phloem and play specific roles in the movement of sugar through the plant. The most commonly transported sugar in plants is sucrose. Sucrose transport begins in the leaves. The term source is used to describe an area of sugar production. Leaves, which are the main sites of photosynthesis and production of sucrose, are the main sources in the plant. Sucrose is produced in the mesophyll cells. It is loaded by active transport into the phloem in the veins of the leaves. When the sugar concentration rises in the phloem near the source, water enters the phloem from the xylem by osmosis. This increases the turgor pressure in the phloem and starts the flow of materials in the phloem. A sink is an area where sugars are used or stored. Roots, meristems, and fruits are sinks. While the direction of xylem transport is usually from roots to leaves, the direction of phloem transport is from leaves, sources, to sinks. In the area of the sink, sucrose is unloaded from the phloem by active transport. When the concentration of sucrose in the phloem near the sink is lowered, water moves out of the phloem by osmosis and back into the xylem. The difference in turgor pressure between the source and the sink causes the flow of the solution in the phloem. Many factors influence the rate of sugar transport. Most important among these is the rate of photosynthesis. On sunny days, when the photosynthetic rate is high, phloem transport rates are also high. On cloudy days, when the photosynthetic rate is low, phloem transport rates are also low.